Hi guys, glad you could make it. Brent Bashera here. Uh, it's a beautiful Saturday day. I think it's the uh, 19th of January. I'm not really sure, something like that. Um, we're living in amazing times, but we're also living in real trying times right now. And like my chief says, my Navy diver chief, he always said, uh, Besh, bring to me a solution. Don't bring to me a problem. And that's what I want to do today is just share stuff that I've learned along my own journey, my own path to allow me to live as well as I can. And it's, it's a method of understanding and application that I've figured out for myself to figure out how to diagnose my thoughts, my feelings, and, and which create my actions and determines my results in life. And so through just a vigilant practice uh, since my retirement from the military uh, of yoga, meditation, uh, and reading, uh, I've figured out and just found some breadcrumbs, some cosmic nuggets along the way that has helped me uh, figure out how to get at it, how to live well, how to live a life of full self-expression and a life of, of, you know, a life well lived. So um, that's my intention today is just share this uh, method of understanding and application. A little bit about my background, I served in the Canadian military for 24 years and one of the motivating reasons why I joined the military is because uh, the judge, uh, said to me, he says, uh, he's looking at his paper and he says, I've seen you in my court here before. This is your second time before me. He says, if I see you in my court again, I'm gonna send you to, to jail. So I suggest you join an institution like the military. And so after my probation, that's what I did. Uh, my bride, Kellyanne, uh, says my talents would have been served best elsewhere designing three-day music festivals, but I joined the military and uh, so for 24 years, uh, I served, and uh, I served first in the uh, Princess Patricia's Canadian Light Infantry. I served there for six years, uh, did a peacekeeping tour in Cyprus. And then uh, for the next uh, 18 years, uh, I served as a clearance diver, a Navy bomb disposal diver, uh, bomb disposal operator, uh, and I served that for 18 and five years of which I served at our uh, hostage rescue counter-terrorist in a special forces unit, and then I did five years also at our national EOD school, uh, finishing out as one of the senior instructors at that school. I had an amazing career. Uh, I served with the most amazing men and women uh, from around the world, truly clutched on, turned on, tuned in uh, human beings that really get the big picture and a, a real honor to serve with these men and women. Uh, for myself though, that service came at a cost, it, it cost me mentally, it cost me physically, and it uh, cost me, uh, you know, my family. I chose my career over my family, and so, you know, I lived away for nine years. So I had to deal with a lot of those, uh, the stresses of choices, the choices that I made, and then having to live with those choices, and, uh, and also the experiences of the military itself. So to help deal with that, I was on medications for seven years, uh, antidepressants, anti-anxiety, high blood pressure pills. And uh, so in my transition from the military, uh, I wanted to get off those medications. So I went and talked to my civilian doctor and uh, she says, Brent, uh, people try to get off those meds, but mostly uh, they, they just get, they, they just fall back onto them. So you just might as well just stay on them. And so I said, okay, because, you know, after 24 years, you just follow with the, you know, the order of the day. Uh, and so um, when I went home and told my bride, Kellyanne, uh, that, uh, well, she snapped and she lost and she said, well, that's no normal way to live. What's the, the egress program to get off those medications? And uh, so I thought about it. And uh, again, I don't advise this, but I got off the medications cold turkey. I just... Uh, left them and then so for 21 days I felt like I was a total uh, biatch. Kellyanne says she didn't really notice anything but uh, after 21 days I had my first normal thought and then my first normal feelings, my real thoughts, real feelings and uh, and I haven't been on them since and uh, I was thankful for that transition but now 
I'm often I'm thankful to be off those medications and live as clean a life as, as possible with yoga and meditation and quinoa and kale and things like that. So, um, you know, in my retirement from the military, uh, the one thing on the, on the Friday when uh, you're, you're at your retirement party, there's lots of pats on the backs and it's a lot of accolades and a lot of excitement and enthusiasm. But then uh, on the Monday, you know, there's this vacuum of activity. There's this, this immense uh, emptiness, right? And so uh, uh, what was missing for me was the application. For, in the military for 24 years, there was a daily application. Uh, when to get there, what you're going to do, how long you're going to stay there, where you're going to go, what you're going to do, and then when you're going to come home. There's this daily application. And that, that's what was missing from my life was this application. So uh, in leaving the military, I took three months off and just, you know, just sat with it, just sat with the, the learning how to decompress from this institution. So one of the things I did was I went online and I started to study, I started to read. I started to read everything and then, then YouTube and then I started to see all these amazing people online, these poets, prophets, professors, painters, physicists, politicians, padres, priests, parsons, preachers, uh, performers, playwrights, philanthropists, uh, podiatrists, and philosophers. And, and I figured out that that's, that's what I am. I am a philosopher. Uh, I love knowledge. I love gathering knowledge, but also I love to share knowledge. And I share knowledge with mostly with my family and friends <laughs> and those that will listen. And I love uh, sharing this knowledge. And uh, in doing so, I also learn along the way because we're all amazing people. Right? And for me, I've had a, a luxury in, in the essence that uh, I learned at a retreat to learn to have the courage to stand for your view of the world. And when I heard those words, you know, I wept because that's, you know, when you're in something like an institution, it's tough to, uh, you know, break out of the mold, right? To find yourself, to be that little chicken, that egg and break out of that, you know, the mold that you've conformed to for 24 years. And so... You know, it's taken me 10 years now to just, you know, sort of uh, figure it out and decompress from that uh, framework. And so, and that's what I've done. And so now, you know, I'm living as well as I can in the relationship of my mind, body, and spirit. Um, and so the luxury that I've created is to be able to have a lifestyle that uh, allows me to do my dedicated yoga, to do my... Wim Hof pond dips in my frozen pond for five minutes a day. Uh, it allows me to do the reading I need to do and the studying I need to do. But this is a life that Kellyanne and I have created. And uh, so I'm very, very thankful for, for this, this. I call it a sincere luxury. And I feel we're living in amazing times, but trying times. And I want to bring, help bring uh, an understanding to how to let go of pictures of the past. Excuse me, I've just got to... I want to stay on track here. Um, da, 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 da. Okay, so again, I studied. I studied uh, everybody. I found great knowledge in, in all the, the passages, scriptures, books, uh, YouTube videos, and and was and what I kept looking for were the were the nuggets, were the breadcrumbs of knowledge and understanding. And the key word for me was application. How do you apply this this concept? How do you apply it to yourself and, and, and get at it? And, you know, so we, we've had or I've studied uh, people all throughout history through uh, like from everybody from Plato, Hermes, Aristotle, Jesus, Buddha, Muhammad, Ronald McDonald, Deepak Chopra, Einstein, Confucius, Emerson, Thoreau, Dean Radin, Marty Rosenblatt, Tom Campbell, Bruce Lipton, Mar Mario Martinez, uh, Rupert Sheldrake, Graham Hancock, Joe Rogan, and uh, you know Wim Hof, right? Represent, and um, so with following these these people standing on these shoulders of giants and reading their books and their passages, you can see the uh, the, the their key application of how they apply themselves, how they uh, uh, make their life amazing, and and there's so many men and women now that are sharing their knowledge of how to live well, how to get at it. And you just have to type that in, TED Talks and all that stuff. We, we're living in amazing times, but it does take a uh, sincere commitment. The accomplishment of our goals is assured that the moment we commit ourselves. 
And that's the, the toughest part is this commitment to, to getting at it. You know, uh, again, I do feel life is like an amusement park and these are really crazy times right now. And so I feel that like Socrates or Plato says, the best possible service we can be to our country or the world is to be the best version of ourselves. And that's what I emulate and try, you know, to do on a daily basis. You know, my my own ability as a human, in my own monkey brain, to to get at living well. And it's for me, it's in the little moments. It's in the moments of meeting uh, each individual I meet uh, on the street, even the person that cuts me off in traffic, the person that in front of me is paying for the groceries and pennies. It's those micro moments that determine, you know, our our reality. Our as Dr. Joe Dispenza says, our, uh, what does he say, our uh, personality or, well, I apologize for that. Um, yeah, our person, that's it. Our personality determines our personal reality. Our personality determines our personal reality. Because uh, if, we, we, if we, we are who we are, we're in a mood, and if our mood's aberrant or, you know, disparaging or whatever it is, in that mood, uh, lasts for days and weeks and that becomes a temperament and if that weeks turns into months and years then that uh, becomes our personality right and if we go downtown with a chip on our shoulder we well for me I found that I've always found someone else out there with an equal and opposite chip on their shoulder but conversely when I've gone downtown with you know with a glint in my eye and a, a spring in my step I found other people also with the same glint and the same spring in their steps so uh, let's just have a look here. Uh, right. So uh, we're going to move on now to next is how to how I've learned and how I figured out in the most simplest way what your tax dollars uh, paid for me to do in the military. For the most part, was to figure out complex situations real time and uh, you know do the job as safe as possible. And then you know for me, it's recognizing patterns and systems. So you know I retired on the Friday. But all that military training didn't stop. I just applied it to knowledge and philosophy and reading and such. What I found is those, those, those people that, uh, that I've studied is that uh, these leading edge people are the Galileos of our time, like Graham Hancock, Rupert Sheldrake, Russell Targ. Uh, their uh, TED Talks were banned. That I find that very neat that these the leading edge of our, our species is still being, you know, uh, bridled and limited. But when we look at podcasts like Joe Rogan and Tim Ferriss, we're listening to uh, great, great people that are sharing the leading edge of our understanding. And that we are, uh, I feel, you know, we're, uh, okay, it's like this. Here's a quick concept. Regardless of your, uh, what your background is, your your faith, your religion, your modality, your credo, your ethos, regardless of what it is, uh, check this out. Um, uh, you're either a fundamentalist and you believe we're one-time consciousness, right? Or we're infinite energy beings uh, having a mortal experience, temporarily experiencing infinity, okay? One-time goo, one-time consciousness, or an infinite energy being. The really neat part is because you can't have two or three lives. We either get get one life one time, or we we get uh, you know an infinite amount of lives. Me, I'm I'm kind of hedging towards this because for me it's all about the math. The math seems to indicate that we're with cycles within cycles, loops within loops. Okay, so regardless though of if we're a one-time goo or an infinite energy being. Uh, temporarily experiencing infinity, uh, this moment of nowness is the only moment we have. And that's what, for me, is, is sharing this, the, the concept of living in a, as present as possible, uh, okay, using the words that I'm going to use just to point us in the direction of how to analyze and diagnose what's going on, okay? So, um, yeah, so one time do infinite energy mean the moment that we are experiencing is then completely unique it's completely unique to this so if we're only going to live life once this moment that we're experiencing is only going to happen once so it's very uh you know creation is still happening so this moment is divine and 
but whereas if we're infinite, that still makes this moment that that much special because it's only going to happen once in a, in a sea of infinity. Okay, so for me, the moment and what I'm learning is the moment, like Eckhart Tolle talks about, the power of now is that we we command our future from the present moment. That we uh, the best way to predict the future is create it, and if we're focusing on what's wrong and what's missing, then uh, that's what our energy is focusing on because where our mind goes, energy flows. If we focus on, on what's right and what's here, and then that seems to be the math that we find, right? I've done you know hundreds and hundreds of uh, tasks within the military and worked with, again, people of all sorts because the military is just a cross-section of society. So you would see people's attitudes towards you know the mission right and those there's the people that got along and those the people that didn't and then there's people that brought solutions and contributed and those that didn't right uh where was i going with that okay one time goo my, my apologies one sec here so yeah so we command our future from uh the present moment and um so how do we diagnose this situation well i've got some some friends here that are going to help me out I've got my friend here, Baby Buddha, represents our our past, the previous versions of ourself, okay? The younger version, the previous version, okay? And that's all this, this represents that, the past. And I've got Buddy over here, Master JC, and what he's representing is the future, I, I our higher self, our uh, more enlightened state, like I feel as a species, it's our desire to grow and expand, to become better, to be better people, a better group, tribe, culture, heritage, village. Remember, it takes a village to raise a village or, or an idiot, right? So, um, right, so the future, right, can only, okay, the past is the past, the future is the future, and we're going to break it down, okay? And what I'm representing here is the now. There we go. I'm representing the now. Excuse me. We're, we're in the now. Okay, so um, what I've learned, one of the first books I got was uh, Secrets of the Millionaire Mind. And for me, a lot of these uh, cats that are writing these books, like uh, Wallace Waddles uh, was, um, what was his book? Uh, I can't remember. Wallace Waddles has a book out, and it's also about, you know, uh, power of wealth and, and such and they use the they use money a lot but I feel that the, the, that's the draw to get people because people want more money but uh, for me the wealth wasn't so much the money the application that I took out of these books was the wealth was peace of mind the wealth is the understanding of how life works because when we know the truth then the truth sets us free okay and again I'm not here to tell anybody anything this is just what I've learned for myself and I want to share. So uh, the past is the past, the future is the future, and we're living here in the now of, of the bubble, uh, the happy bubble, or maybe the not so happy bubble. And uh, so what I learned from T. Harv Ecker in his book, uh, Secrets of the Millionaire Mind, is that our thoughts lead to our feelings, our feelings lead to our actions, and our actions lead to our results. Our thoughts to our feelings, feelings to our actions, and our actions to our results. Thoughts and feelings happen on the inside of the body and results happen on the outside of the body and the bridge between the inside world and the outside world is action. So it takes intention and action. It's understanding and application, okay? Because if we do nothing, nothing happens. The bag of money doesn't come rocketing through the ceiling, okay? It takes us to use the natural laws of trade and commerce to get out in the world and make it happen. Because if we do nothing, nothing happens. Because if we do what we've always done, we're going to get what we've always gotten. And which way does a tree fall is the way it leans. So if we're always leaning into what's wrong and what's missing, then that's what we're going to that's what we're going to collect. If we lean into what's right and what's here, that's what we find. Okay. And that's been back to my missions that I worked on. And that's the the point that I wanted to make was that if we focus on what's right and what's here. And this is what we've got. This is what we've got to work with because we work with what we've got to work towards what we want. Okay. And so rather than pine and moan and drip about what's missing, 
Let's focus on what we do have and let's work with what we have toward, towards what we want. Okay, like the Sarge uh, said to me in basic, uh, he says, uh, Besh, that uh, any man and or woman can be cold when they're hungry, but through a little imagination, innovativeness, and uh, ingenuity, you can, you can live quite comfortably. But warning, uh, there's going to be a little bit of work involved. And that's what I say is with this, that don't take my word for it. Warning, there's going to be a little bit of work involved. But once we truly commit to that uh, goal, uh, the accomplishment of that goal is assured the moment we commit ourselves. But it, it's going to take a little bit of work. All right. And okay. So uh, let's let's go through it. So what are our thoughts? Okay. So we've got thoughts, feelings, actions, and results. So let's start with our thoughts. What are our thoughts? Uh, where do they come from? Um, well, we have great scientists working that out, but for the most part, we don't know where they come from, but we understand that our brain is a processor. We know that it is a processor and that we know that uh, as it's processing, we, we process thoughts at 60,000 thoughts a day. I'm sure women have twice as many thoughts, but um bum And uh, so they're operating at light speed. And now they've got a uh, microscope so powerful that they can see inside the brain and seeing uh, neurons and neurons are brain cells and they make our connections to form thought thought loops and so we've got like a hundred billion brain cells in our brain and we also have correspondingly a hundred billion stars in our galaxy i wonder if there's a correlation there just thinking anyways thoughts operate at basically light speed and they've got a microscope so small now that they can see two neurons two cell brain cells forming a thought and and, it, and you can go online and see this and it's these uh, two nodes and they've got little little arms sticking off of them and then these two are attracted to each other and these tendrils form across and that's making a thought it's making a thought loop and in basic uh, Sarge was always saying but sure give your head a shake right and and if you look at the Caesar Milan method what's he doing when he pokes the dog in the neck or he gives the uh, chain a pull what the Sarge and Caesar are talking about is breaking that thought loop, right? When we've seen the hero on uh, in a movie or heroin, and they're freaking out, going, "We're gonna die! We're gonna die! We're gonna die!" And and some cat gives them a slap. Well, what they're doing is they're breaking that thought loop. The little dog that's pining and yapping, going, "Meh meh 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 meh," and the owner's going, "Misty, Misty, quiet, be quiet." Well, that dog that's barking is got a thought, a little reality. When Caesar gives him that tug on the chain or the poke in the neck, uh, it breaks that node, breaks that thought that's forming in their brain, okay? And then it pops them back to the now. When they're stuck in their, stuck in their head, right, they're, they're looking at a picture. And that's essentially what a thought is. And you can do this for yourself. Just have a look. What is a thought? A thought is simply a picture in your mind. Any thought, any thought. For example, what did you have for breakfast? Well, I had for breakfast uh, a smoothie. I had uh, a smoothie. So in that uh, smoothie shake, I had to form a picture of seeing it, right? What did you have for breakfast? Eggs, bacon, granola, hemp hearts, something, or cereal, whatever. But you had to form a picture in your mind, right? You had to look. So that was a picture in the past. Now, if you look to the future, what, what are we gonna have for supper? Well, I'm not sure, probably a salad and, and something. But I have to form a picture in my mind to think, to think, again, go up into the belfry of my mind and, and see the, the picture of what I'm gonna have in the future, which is, again, just a picture. But we can only access this from the present moment. So we see that Thoughts are pictures, okay? The pictures that we create. And so, like Marissa Peer talks about, we are the pictures that we create and the words we say. The pictures we create and the words we say. So, we see these pictures and the, the pictures are essentially, or thoughts, are essentially cold, empty, and meaningless. And they only have the meaning in the meaning that we give it. Thoughts only have the meaning in the meaning that we give it. So if we have thoughts of the past, right, that are bad or negative of a nature, then they create a feeling in our body. 
right? And so that's what happens is our thoughts, these pictures, generate an electrical signal in our body that generates chemicals and releases that feeling. Uh, uh, right, so that's the thought creates the feeling in our body. And, and that's all we really need to know at this point. And you can do this for yourself. Marissa Peer does this talk on uh, YouTube where she gets an audience to imagine holding a lemon in their hand and with great detail and then taking a bite and you, you salivate in the present moment. Well, that's only because of the thought that you had. You know, when I was a kid, I got bit by a dog, the farm dog, and every time we would go to the farm, I would get freaked out because that dog was there and the, I didn't like the dog and he didn't like me, but just in thinking of that dog, because he bit me once, I would freak out. I'd even feel the pain in my leg. But that dog was a day away. We had to drive to the farm. That dog was a day away. But I was experiencing that moment because I simply put a picture in my mind which activated chemicals, released chemicals in my body, and I experienced that fight or flight rush, right? And simply from the picture in my mind. Uh, so that's what's happening to us. And so for me, how I had to process uh, my decompression, deinstitutionalization from the military was learn how to process the pictures in my mind which created the feelings in my body. And I still work at this every day. You know, if I'm having a, a discussion with my bride and, you know, it's, it's a heated discussion, I'll feel the feelings or, uh, you know, so I'm learning then to understand what's what's going on here what's the mechanism of my feelings to my thoughts the relationship and learning how to uh, uh, not necessarily control them learn how to process them because feelings are processes of the body uh, processes of the body no different than circulation digestion and respiration and it's a process of the body that's being processed and so if we live in harmony and balance then we have harmony and balance in our thoughts. We have harmony and balance in our body. Um, excuse me. Um, uh, let's see here. Um, where was I? Um, Right. So our thoughts lead to our feelings, our feelings lead to our actions. So we have the thoughts and they, and we now know that they're creating the feelings in, in our body. So by learning how to, pro oh, that's right. So in the understanding that it's a process of the body, okay, that it's a process like circulation, digestion, and respiration, that uh, because we can witness it, we can observe it, our thought processes, which are creating our feeling processes, we can modify them. If we're having poor experiences, we can modify our understanding of our thoughts to our feelings and learn to surf our situation better. And that's what the doctor said, was that uh, learning how to deal with it. And that's, you know, I would have liked to have had an understanding of how to deal with it by understanding the, the mechanism of perception that I'm experiencing, that we're all experiencing, okay? So uh, it's a process of the body. So check this out. Um, when you hear a great joke that's so funny, uh, you hear Tom Segura drop one of his fantastic uh, jokes, you, you just start laughing because he's put a picture in your mind of something completely hilarious. And so you laugh, you go, that was funny, that made me laugh. You go, ah ha ha, knee slap and uh, you're experiencing laughter and you, and, you, and you ride that feeling out until the very end. Remember, uh, it's a process of the body and, and when we process uh, these feelings in the present moment, in the now, that's a healthy processing of that feeling. Uh, 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 poor processing of the feeling would be um, where if we hear something of a bad, negative, or sad nature here in the West, we've learned to uh, hold and not feel those feelings and, and, and not directly experience those feelings. And so these, these feelings get stored in our tissues, okay? These bad, negative, uh, uh, 
uh, feelings get stored in our tissues. And um, one concept here I want to share is that the past is also, yeah, I guess I could have put that up earlier. The, the past is, is what? Our stories, our history, our injuries, our traumas, our experiences, our events and emotions. And this is the energy of we get it. So if our life, if our past is full of this, this energy of stories, history, injury, trauma, experiences, events and emotions, then this is what we're going to energize in our reality, all right? Because we're focusing on this and where our mind goes, energy flows. And so if we're focusing our thoughts on the, the stories, the blames, the woulda, coulda, shouldas, there's something wrong, there's something missing, uh, what are other people thinking of me, right? The right to be right, right? If we're energizing our world with those thoughts, then that's what's going to energize our cells. And this is the work of Dr. Bruce Lipton and Dr. Mary Martinez and Dr. Joe Dispenza is that when we focus, because our perspective is our reality, our personality, or like Dr. Joe says, our personality creates our personal reality. When we're looking at this, uh, at these images of, of our past and we're energizing it, then our cells are being um, are responding to the images that we see and the words we say. So if we're saying that it was BS and poppycock, then that's what's going to, and this isn't uh, looking at the world through rose colored glasses. This is directly experiencing our present moment with, with all of our sensors, with all of our uh, senses tuned into what's going on, perceiving the moment as much as, as possible by directly experiencing it. So if we're having because uh, in the present moment, what we experience is sensation, images, feelings, and thoughts. In the present moment, right? We, we feel what we feel. We see what we see, right? We have the, uh, uh, the feelings that we have, right? Our thoughts lead to our feelings. Our feelings lead to our actions, and our actions lead to our results. So in understanding how to process this, right? We create our, uh, the best way to predict the future is create it. But we can only create it from the present moment. And if we're being hindered or limited or impeded uh, in life, it's mostly because we're activating, you know, our fear, our fear-based perspectives, our fear-based realities based on stories, history, our injuries, our traumas. And these are very real things, right? And I appreciate that they are because I've lived through my, my decompression from the military. I've lived through sincere grief and loss. And... Uh, these moments don't define who who we are. They're not our reality, okay? But they have happened to us. And they're very, very sincerely. They, it's a lot of these situations suck out loud. And uh, I've lost friends, dear dear friends, and uh, I don't want to get into it. But it's it doesn't define who we're, who we are. We can still find joy in our life. We don't have to carry any of this guilt. And, 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 and shame or anything like that from the past, the woulda, coulda, shoulda, I should have done something, right? We don't have to carry that anymore, okay? We can let that go. And initially it's tough. It's super freaking tough to let go of these habits. And these are simply habits of poor processing, poor programming. Remember, success is but a habit, as Aristotle says. And it, it takes... It takes work, a little bit of work in the beginning till it becomes a habit, but we can do it. We're amazing creatures that have these plastic minds that can mold and morph and, and process at ballistic light speeds. But we gotta be kind to ourselves and, and, uh, and get at it. But if we, do, if we do what we've always done, we're gonna get what we've always got. And we need to not, nobody needs to do anything. I'm not saying that. But if you're not living well, if you're not enjoying the present moment experience, right? Then I'm trying to share with you an understanding of helping you let these go, let them go because they, they no longer serve us. And that's what I learned is to let go of the grudges, the blames, you know, the resentments, you know, those attachments, those attachments to form, which are emotional forms, physical forms, emotional forms. And we hang on to these things and we energize these these pictures of the past, simply just pictures that are impeding our present moment experience because we're like oh, dwelling and pining about the past or we're anticipating some future event, 
as we learn that our future events define who we're being in the present moment, right? So if we're, you know, stress can work both ways. And so if we're looking at the future and, and like, look at the difference between your feelings between, oh, I gotta go to work on Monday, right? Or I'm going on a vacation on Monday, right? There's no difference between those two, except it's just a picture, a picture of vacation or a picture of the J-O-B. There's no difference. It's releasing feelings in our body, right? So if we're focusing on the, you know, the, uh, the information, because it's all just information, it's all just data, it's all just electromagnetic information, right? How do we see? We see through thought waves, waves of light bouncing off objects that then are uh, hitting the back of our retina, sending electromagnetic information to our brains, which are putting pictures in our mind. And that's how we see. How do we hear? We hear sound waves traveling through the air, hits our tympanic membrane, sends electrical magnetic information to our brain, puts pictures, right? Uh, when you put your hand into a bag and you're feeling, right? Uh, you go, oh, I can feel that. You're putting imagery into your mind. And so, um, uh, where do we go with that? <laughs> Is the, uh, oh, it's all just information. So our senses, so it's just wiring. So all of our senses are wired, ears, nose, mouth, eyes, and taste. And if we were to re rewire that, we know that people have synesthesia now, you would be able to taste blue, right? You'd be able to hear Wednesday and, and things like that. People hear colors and see sounds, right? And it's this is now quite uh, quite common. So we see it's just information that's being processed through the hub of our brain, right? This information is being processed. So, uh, and we know that through that processing creates the feelings in our body now. And I think we can see the, the mechanism of this, of our perception is how we choose or have learned to perceive the world is, is how it is. And that's what the work of uh, Bruce Lipton shows us is through that the stem cell research he did back in the 70s that when he exposed his stem cells to different materials that they started to turn into those materials and take on those qualities and he figured out that it was only through their environment through their perceptors that they changed right so you know like the monk uh, before enlightenment he hauled water and chopped wood and after enlightenment we still haul water and chop wood so it's, it's how do we choose to perceive the, re, the world around us and how have we learned, right? Initially, our thoughts, where does our thoughts come from? Initially, you know, there's some genetics involved, but also it comes from our parents, right? The first sound that we hear is our mother's heartbeat, right? And uh, the next sound we hear is our, our uh, the next, the, the first uh, sounds he hear, I believe, is, is, is his father's voice. No, it's a, the mother's heartbeat and then the father's voice. What's neat is that's where the initial programming of our thoughts come from. Then from our siblings and from our family and friends and society. And that's where our programming comes from. And that's why, you know, if we were to clone six of you and put you on one on each continent and grow you up, you know, you would all basically like the same things. You would all culturally, you know, uh, you'd have the same basic dispositions, but half of you, you know, culturally speaking, would eat meat, half of you wouldn't, half of you would believe in reincarnation, and the other uh, uh, wouldn't believe in reincarnation. And that's just due to your cultural upbringing, your, the programming of your culture, right? You know, I try to live as possible as a, a, a global citizen to see us all you know, hurtling through infinity on this speck of dust, traveling, you know, at high ballistic speeds around other uh, ballistic objects, traveling at ballistic speeds. And, you know, for me, you know, I want us to lean into us as a species, a global species. And, you know, if we look at the world, the, uh, the globe now, you know, it's all, you know, parcels of land. And, and, I, and I feel in my heart of hearts that the society of the future is going to look back at us and see us as, wow, what a fragmented society, you know, right? There is no us or them. There's just us, right? It's just we, the people, us, you know, living our life. Everyone's doing the best they can and everyone's, you know, right in their own mind. And when we can find the commonality, 
versus focusing on the difference. And it's, it's all what we focus on is what we attract in the world. And what we put out is what we get back, energetically speaking. And what we resist persists, right? So if we keep resisting change, right? And I love what Socrates says is, uh, you know, don't, don't fight the old, focus instead on building the new. So we don't need to go to battle anymore. War is obsolete. We just need to focus on, you know, being innovative and, and, and willing to change. And what I learned from the shaman and the Shaw women is that when we truly lean into this, this tipping point of, of attitude, this uh, tipping point of understanding and application, it's only going to take 10 years for us to really change. And, and it does seem scary, but uh, for us to be doing, have different things in life and create a different reality, we have to be doing and become different people. And, and change, to change our personality is so tough. But, you know, I've, I've you know, luckily I've been at least 51% happy in life. I, whatever genetic programming that my, my beautiful parents gave me, well, gave me the fortitude to be at least 51% happy. You know, and you talk to any of my friends and yeah, they'll say I'm a pretty positive guy. Okay, and uh, but I apply that you know happiness now and what I've learned from the military and what I learned from my family and friends, uh, I learn it and I apply it, and uh, I now I just want to share it as much as possible. Uh, I believe in us. I believe in you, and because you know we've always existed on small groups of uh, 50 people, small groups that have, have you know carried our culture and our species forward. So I do believe in the village, I do believe in tribe, I believe in us as a global village. And uh, so this is, you know, what I am doing in my heart of hearts is to share this knowledge that I've gathered because I've had a luxury to gather it. And now, uh, now we have the luxury of this uh, desktop publishing. And so I just want to share this first with my family and friends, my military brothers and sisters, the cops, the paramedics I've worked with, and teachers. And whoever just is, is bummed out and, and upset and it's not working out for them, that, you know, you can do it. You can do it. And if I could share one thing uh, with anybody is that, uh, you know, just commit to sitting still. Commit to uh, uh, pen and paper, writing things down. Commit to listening to your thoughts, listening to the pictures that, that we create in our mind, right? And learning to learn how to process the why in the moment how my thought that simple picture in my mind is creating a feeling in my body so for the the trauma and the experiences I've seen that have been completely horrible right I just learned to be able to sit with them and see them for what they are and and now because in the present moment those events have happened you know days and days and weeks and weeks and months and months and years and years ago that I can see it for what it is because it's not happening now. The previous experience, the previous event isn't happening now, okay? But it has an, an effect on me right now and, it, and, it's, and that event is uh, still activated per se in the sense that if we had something that was so horrible of nature that I can't even think of it, the energy from witnessing that event is still stored in our body. It's energy, okay? And if we don't learn how to process that feeling by letting it go, by letting it come to the surface, then it gets stored in our tissues, okay? And this is where our cancers come from, our fibromyalgias and all of this other stuff. And the work of Dr. John Sarno talks about this stuff of learning how to directly experience these unprocessed emotions, events, and experience uh, by and what I've learned to do is by sitting with these experiences and events, by witnessing them in, in, in my mind, by sitting still in a, in a quiet place uh, for five, I learned, it, when I initially started to learn how to meditate, uh, five minutes was torturous. I'd hit the timer and I'd, I'd, I'd try to sit and I'd look at it and what, it's only a minute and a half has gone by, right? Now I sit for five minutes in the cold icy pond and uh, love it. You know, in my meditation practice, I, it, you know, sometimes two and three hours will go by. But that's just because I've learned to enjoy sitting with myself. And, and until we have the courage to sit with those previous pictures, those experiences and events, 
They're going to stay stored in our tissues and they're going to affect us and they're going to keep poking at us and poking at us and poking at us because the body wants to process these experiences and events. It wants to naturally process it just like the, uh, the bad crab sandwich that we ate or the one too many tequila, right? It's an energy that uh, the body wants to get rid of. But if it's small, if the experience is small enough in nature, then we can just pass it and it'll just pass through our system. But if it's of large enough nature, like we had too much bad crab, too much tequila, then the body's gonna want to get rid of it. And feelings are processes of the body no different than a burp, shit, sneeze, fart, orgasm, vomit. It's a process of the body that it has to be processed and if we impede it through our thoughts saying I'm not going to throw this up while the body's going to say I want to throw it up and if we try to impede it with our mind then uh, what happens is the body's going to say right I'm either going to black you out or you're going to throw up anyways right and that's the same thing with these e events and emotions and experiences is the body's uh, naturally trying to uh, expunge it from the body and it's through the direct experience that we get the opportunity to uh, dissipate these old energies, these old bubbles of information that are stored in our body. And so what happens is we're energetically bothered, right? Our experiences is being impeded by these previous events. So through you know the cosmic process, events line up in our life to allow us to uh, directly experience the, the, these things. That's why we have these occurrences. Why does this always happen to me? Why is this always happening to me? It's because we either have some poor programming, right? Poor habits of thought and perception, or we have, you know, traumas, experiences, events of the past that are impeding our experience of the present moment. And we might not even be conscious of what's going on. So what I've learned to do was by sitting still and allowing and accepting powerful words the the experience of what I'm having right when we when we, we have to upchuck we have to throw up the the experience of the past which was that crab salad but it was bad crab uh, we didn't we don't need to know that it's the crab salad we could probably figure it out but we just need to get rid of it uh, from the body and that's through excuse me the, the direct experience we we by sitting still and accepting the situation for what it is that it's not happening now and viewing it without judgment right viewing it without blame we can uh, allow those pictures to be present in our mind and by sitting still with it we let it bubble up just like a burp just like a fart just like a sneeze uh, we let it bubble to the surface and we directly experience but we've in the West it's tough for us to sit with our feelings right but I've learned to to be present to those feelings and through those great waves of grief, great waves of uh, emotions, events and experiences that are bubbling up. A lot of times I don't have a picture to the experience that's coming up, but I, I, I just need to let it go. Do I need to know what's making me sick or do I need to know what's causing me to sneeze, burp, uh, poo poo or, or whatever? I don't need to know, I just need to know I need to process it and, and let it out. So by learning to uh, uh, allow the feeling to bubble up just like the burp sneeze, uh, then we process it. And that's how I've learned for myself to process it. I'm not here to tell anybody to do anything uh, or how to do anything. This is just how I've learned to do it for myself based on you know the hundreds of books I've read, uh, thousands and thousands of hours of YouTube, that I've watched and just seen the really great people get at it. You know, there is a simplicity to life, and there is a uh, uh, yeah, just there is a simplicity to life. You know, warning, don't don't take my word for it. Warning, there might be a little bit of work involved. But again, once we truly learn to play a better game, a higher game, and by just being the best us in the moment, you know, you know, I'm not always great at it. You know, talk to my bride, right? You know, but you know. When I do step up to my own plate, you know, uh, like, like I've learned from Lyle Russell, she says, God, nature, the divine will work with us, but not for us. And that's what I've learned to do is by learning to process these previous experiences and events, 
recognizing them that they're simply just pictures in my mind that are not happening now, right? It's not happening now, nor are the pictures of the future happening now. But the, there are pictures that are impeding my experience of the present moment because I woulda, coulda, shoulda, there was something wrong, there's something missing. What are people thinking of me? Oh, I've got the right to be right, right? And these are those pictures of the past that we're energizing, we're pressing play on. You know, like my son says, when uh, the girl's freaking about, oh, he's gonna wash my hands, gonna oh, there's germs everywhere. He just say to her, just stop thinking about it. Stop thinking about it, right? Stop thinking about it. Stop giving it that picture. Stop giving it energy. Stop giving it uh, a power, right? Because what happens is, well, for, when we're present in the body, and this is what I've really learned with the Wim Hof method by sitting in my cold pond for five minutes at a time, I can only be present to the body. If I, as soon as I pop up into the belfry of my mind with the bats and the squirrels, right, the cold rushes in immediately. When I first started this, the water was so cold, it hasn't, the winter water is the same temperature, but when I first started, the water felt like it was burning my skin, right? But now through the Wim Hof method and through a dedicated practice uh, for two years now, I can sit in that pond uh, for five minutes easily now and it's very refreshing and again that's through mindset and application just to know it you know doesn't do it I got to do it so to do is to know and so uh, what and now what I immediately feel and you can get the same thing with a cold shower is the feeling of being present to the body and when we're present and we're breathing properly you know uh, we're fine because there's nothing impeding our experience of the present moment but when we uh, suddenly, or when we go up into the belfry where our mind is, I think nature's biggest joke is putting our eyes up here, so we feel we're up here in the periscope of our sensors, right? And that's all this is, is a glorified sensor, no different than a robot, right? It's sensing the environment, and, and that's what these are, our sensors. I feel we live here in, in, the, in our heart space, because when you come up to someone, a stranger, you go, you say, hi, uh, I'm Brent, or hi, nice to meet you, or nice, I love you too. But you don't go, hi, I'm Brent, right? Hi, you don't say that, because then, you know, we don't exist here. This is a sensor and a processor that's processing our experience of reality right now. But uh, I go more, I'll have more uh, talks on that later. Right now, I just want to share with you the simplicity of the present moment that regardless of the experiences, events, the stored emotions that we have in our body, we can learn to process them and live a life well lived, right? But it takes some dedicated practice, just a little bit, a little bit, five minutes a day. And, and what I learned to do was just Monday to Friday, sit for five minutes. I would sit with my, uh, with my book and my paper and, and and learn to recognize thoughts is just basically leaves on a river, clouds passing, you know, those, that's the imagery that they give us in the beginning. And just learn to sit and not be swayed by it. That when I recognize, oh my gosh, I've been lost in thought in the belfry for the last five, 10 minutes, not to berate myself, but to say, wow, thank you for the awareness. Thank you for my awareness of the present moment. Going back to the breath, going back to simply just breathing and watching the breath, feeling the sensations of the breath on my nose or my mouth and in my body. And then allowing these uh, energies of the past, regardless of what they were, it could just be accumulated stress of society, regardless. You don't have to be a flight controller, paramedic, cop to experience stress, right? Stress can just come from un, uh, poor processing of the present moment, feeling that there's something wrong, there's something missing. What are people thinking of me? The right to be right, right, right? So uh, by learning to process, like learning how to eat, process our digestion, right? Learning how to breathe properly, learning, and this is all this is, is learning how to process our feelings, uh, which are generated by the pictures in our mind. The pictures we create, create the feelings in our body. And if we're not feeling good, then what are the pictures that we're focusing on? Are we always focusing on television information, the news information, media information, right? That's information that our processor is processing. And if we're always giving it information, never giving it a time to chill out, then the brand, the processor for our mind is working. And that's why we're like, uh, right? 
you know for example when you turn on your computer and you open Photoshop and Excel and Outlook and all those programs at once there's a that happens it slows down same thing if you're in a stressful uh, environment a stressful relationship right these that's a lot of information that the mind has to process okay we there's basically two million bits of information around us at any one point in time and we can process six or something like that it's it's a pathetic amount right that we can remain conscious to but if we're always feeding our brain uh, information then it's working okay we need to you don't need to do anything but what I've learned to do is by sitting still through meditation by a dedicated practice initially just for five minutes a day Monday to Friday learn to allow and, and, and learn to process the pictures of my mind and seeing them for what they were were just pictures because all my vexations disgruntledness weren't happening now they're only happening in my mind on the player in my mind playing those pictures over and over of disgruntledness resentment anger but once I saw what it was, uh, I then learned through that process that I had to be have accountability for the, the experiences of my past. I had to have authorship and ownership and authenticity from the present moment. Looking backwards, once I accepted and had that uh, ownership of those pictures, saying, yeah, that did happen to me, right, right, I did do that. But then I learned... Uh, through the landmark process that what happened happened and what didn't happen didn't happen. What was said was said and what wasn't said wasn't said. That simply the experiences of the past now are pictures. Yes, there could be some pending issues, but for the most part, when you really sit down and look at it, the the moment that we're fretted about, because they say we're not really upset for the reason we think, right? What it is is an opportunity, that obstacle, that pain, that, uh, there are opportunities for us to access peace of mind, to directly experience those pictures of the past. And that's what those obstacles are. These impeding moments and thoughts, right, is the body's natural process for us to directly experience it. But we've learned this fearful method of not experiencing our feelings, right? We, we allow ourselves to feel really good feelings, right? Really happy feelings. Those are easy ones to process, but we haven't learned to process you know, heavier feelings, sad, mad, and, and bad feelings, right? But they're just processes. Like we talked about a healthy process of a happy feeling would be, ha, 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 that made me laugh. Uh, you know, that was so funny that made me laugh. But a bad, mad, or sad feeling would be, you know, initially, you know, we've learned to shut it off. But a healthy process would be, wow, oh, that made me mad. Wow, oh, I'm feeling anger. Wow, oh, that made me mad. Wow, oh, I'm feeling anger. Wow, that, wow, that really made me mad. But it's not happening now per se. If it is, then you have to deal with the situation. You've got to orient, you've got to observe, you've got to decide and act in the present moment. But once the moment's over, you know, or you hear some information, to learn to process it, because there's no sense of moving forward with this energized anger or freaked out state. You know, what I've learned to do is by processing the moment by, whoa, that made me mad. Oh, I'm, I'm angry. That made me mad. I'm angry. And then I learned to decompress by being. Just keeping the picture in my mind and seeing it for what it is, breathing into the, the feeling, and letting it dissipate naturally through the direct experience. And that's it, by staying present to the picture in my mind. And initially, certain events that I've experienced, uh, I could only get glimpses of them in the beginning. I just like even thinking of opening that picture and uh, it'd be too much. But, you know, a lot of my processing, I just had the the dumb luck courage to sit with it but also in the beginning I needed to find facilitators other other people that got it and learn and, and, and asked to sit with them I found coaches other people living their life how do they process it uh, so and also through plant medicine ayahuasca psilocybin by you know these are medicines that the shaman and shaw women have used for thousands and thousands of years plants uh, that allow us access to learn to process the previous experiences in the past so that we can see them for what they are and, and see the lessons because ultimately what I'm learning in life that in every experience there is a uh, a gift there is a gift and, and it might not even seem like it but in years to come 
uh, I found that all of my experiences have been a gift of at least understanding, at least a gift of knowing that, well, I'm not going to do that again, or I'm not going to make those choices. Because in the uh, fall of 06, when I was looking at leaving the military, I realized that this was a case of, uh, for me to really live well, it was a case of uh, choices, my choices, and my accountability for myself. And, uh, and that was it. It was a simple understanding of the choices I've made, and now the, uh, the accountability of uh, being able to sit with the choices I've made, right? And then seeing them for what they are, that they're just simply pictures uh, of my past, my stories, my history, right? That they're just pictures that, and if they're of a bad matter, sad nature, I've learned to process the feelings from being able to look at those pictures. Now I can look at them, all of them now, you know, for the most part that I can find or the feelings I allow and accept to come up, that they're just pictures of the past, no different than a Sunday newspaper, okay? And that's, that's how I've learned to process the decompression from the military. Uh, it's how I've learned to process the choices I've made in life and now to process the experience I have in the present moment, be it whatever, because life is happening, life's occurring all around us. I find if I spend too much time in the media, information stream, that uh, you know my, I, my brain shuts down. I just I, I have to have technology timeouts. I can't you know you know especially now that I've learned this this method of connection by just sitting still and. Uh, you know, one of, one of the things I learned to do by uh, writing things down was to uh, make a list. You know, in the beginning, uh, I made a list on how to uh, create my dream job. I saw all my buddies getting out of the military, but you know what? That's another, that's another lecture, not lecture, but a sharing. I'm not here to tell anybody to do anything. Everybody's all right. Everybody's okay. Everybody's doing the best they can with what they've got. And this, this story, my story, isn't for everybody, okay? It isn't for everybody, uh, you know, but if it can help, um, I'm so thankful. Uh, you know, uh, I love to talk about this. This is my favorite subject uh, in the world. Life is my favorite subject. We're living in amazing times. But right now, we're also living in some trying times. And so I want to help out. I want to help people live as well as they can, live with full authenticity and full self-expression, with love, kindness. You know, I feel we're gonna have world peace in our lifetime, and it's, it's gonna happen through education, empowerment, uh, enthusiasm, and empathy. And when we truly commit to living with these tenets, this ethos, this credo in our life, the world, the universe, the matrix, responds to what we're putting out, and this is what we know in the math of the quantum world, that the observer effect, that what we focus on, we do attract, okay? We know that through the physics, that Max Planck and Niels Bohr and L.B. Einstein and the guys, that when they were working on their experiments, that they knew that they couldn't be in the room. We now know through uh, people like Russell Targ and Hal Putoff and, and Marty Rosenblatt, through remote viewing, that we can, and Rupert Sheldrake, that we can easily send our consciousness to any point in space or time and observe any person, place, or thing in, in, in the present moment or in the past. And we now know that we can observe into the future. And these are our natural human abilities. These are our abilities to send our consciousness beyond our physical body, okay, our perceived physical body. You know, that there's more space in matter than there is actually uh, matter itself. And these are topics and these are the information of the day that thoroughly inspires me, right from ancient tribal knowledge to the most leading edge of our, our quantum understanding. And then the, the amalgamation of our spirituality and science. Because there is a simplicity to life, but we gotta focus on it and, and live with wonder and live with excitement and, and, and clean up. And, and the I find the best possible service that I can be to society is just being simply the best me that I can be. So I, I, I say this with absolute sincerity. I'm so thankful to have this opportunity to, to live in a life where I can just say the words that I've said because there's people living in this world that aren't even able to say those words you know out in public without you know repercussions so uh, I'm so very thankful to live in a world that allows me to now sit 
and stand for my view of the world. I have family and friends that support that understanding. And I just want to share this because this isn't for everybody. Some people won't even get this. And that, that's okay because everyone's okay. Everything's all right. And just the more of us that lean towards the positive side of getting at it and, and, and turning this world around with better technologies, better understanding, better medicines, better, you know, uh, pharmacies, better educations, better banking systems, when we learn to uh, see the good in it, that we don't need to throw it all out. We just need to rejig it rejig it. We need to just modify what's going on and how we do that is rather than putting blame and accusation is by doing what I can do within my own happy bubble and it's by me being the best me that I can be. So uh, if you have any questions you can find me on the Facebook and uh, you know I wish you all very very well. If you're hearing this you know you've got you know, you've got your health, you've got an opportunity to do, to make change in your life and you can do it. I believe in you. I, I see it all the time. I sit with my friends and family and we have discussions and they tell me their story, their history, and they talk about their situation. And, uh, but ultimately the ultimate thing is all of our vexations and disgruntlenesses are just pictures of the past. Okay. It's not really happening in the present moment. Certain situations can be happening, but we can learn to let go of that vexation, that, that sincere energy that's causing us physical, you know, debilitative uh, actions because we're focusing and we're, we're stewing and we haven't learned how to process. So I wish you guys well. Uh, I want you to live well, as live as well as you can. Life is amazing and uh, I hope to see you and uh, that's it. That was easy. All right, guys. Live well. Talk soon.